Hello, everybody. And this is Stacy from The Advisor. And I'm very excited today because we have a very special guest today. I finally got him on my show and I'm really excited. He is an author. He has a book that is coming out in June. It's called Building Success. He's an entrepreneur and he had built himself up from poverty to a very comfortable and very nice lifestyle. And he has the answers to all your questions. He has one from A to Z and he knows how to do it. So he's here today to share and help people and show people how they can build success in their daily lives. So Tommy, tell us a little about yourself and what you do. All right, Stacey, first of all, thanks for that wonderful introduction. I might not have answers to all their questions, but I'll try. <laughs> all <Alrighty. laughs> I, I, Madam Cleo got in trouble for offering those, so I can't offer exactly all right. <laughs> right. But, but thank you so much for having me on your show. All your segments are so cool, and I love the, it's always very, very upbeat. It's never somber. It's always a lot of fun, so that's great. Uh, so to, to answer your question, so again, my name's Tommy Whitehead. By trade, by day, I'm a licensed contractor in the state of Florida. So I deal with your multifamily properties, your single family properties, mo mainly in the residential sector. Uh, but I've kind of been told, hey, Tommy, you got a lot of cool stories. You need to write a book. And I said, no, 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 no. Uh, and they're like, yes. And then they introduced me to this New York Times bestselling author that agreed to be my editor. And she's like, no, you got to tell your story. And I said, okay. <laughs> so here we are about a year later. Um, and now in addition to being a contractor, I decided to do something a little different and tell people about my story in Building Success, a toolbox coming out on top that's coming uh, coming out very soon on June 1st. Oh, that's amazing. You know, and, you know, besides people encouraging you, what message do you really want to get across to people? Because, you know, there's a lot of times we have a passion when it comes to writing a book. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. So there is an inner passion that makes you, you know, people could tell us, oh, you got to do this. You got to do this. You got to do this. But there's like, you know, there's always that inner passion or that that purpose inside of us that kind of draws us to doing what we do. Now, you know, how did this all begin? Because you said, you know, what made you, first of all, what made you really want to write? the book and you said you came from a, a poverty lifestyle so was that like the main factor you really wanted to show people you know let, listen you can you can live this life but it doesn't mean you have to stay like this that you could actually better yourself and elevate yourself to new levels in life so what triggered the book specifically um was between 2020 and 2022 and 2020 everybody suffered lost my almost lost my company if it wasn't for my husband's salary would have lost our house uh and my mom got diagnosed with cancer oh, um yeah. fast forward two years to 22 and she passed away oh, and so i was thank you and i was trying to recover from the morning of loss of a business which was recovering and then my mother died in her 50s i mean it was she was very young uh she was young when she had me um and obviously she was very young when she passed away mm -hmm. um and so I define, I, I started talking to people, changing the way I did things. I wanted to see, do I even want to stay in construction? Mm -hmm. um, found out, yeah, I do different types of construction, but I want to do that. But I've got to find and reach out to other people. I got to start networking. I got to start changing things. Yeah. And so when I did that, uh, I started getting professionals around me and they're like, yeah, you need to write a book. And I had enough stories, enough pain, enough lessons. I wanted to show other kids, other adults that it's okay. You can get knocked down quite a bit. I've, yeah. I've failed many times and my building success involved having failures. Mm -hmm. And so the real message is, Hey, it's not your circumstances. You can create your own circumstances. I grew up poor. Uh, I had to ed educate myself. I went through multiple different types of careers before I landed to where I'm at today. Mm -hmm. And I'm turning 40 on June 1st at the release of this book. And I just feel like I'm starting to get my footing on what I want to look at. So don't get down to yourself if you're 18 and haven't figured it out. And if you need to start over at 40, that's okay too. Uh, Oprah didn't even get started until 40. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's building success can happen at any time. That's so true. You know, a lot of times people like give up, you know, they, they yeah. fail once or twice and then like, that's it, you know, I can't do it. But you know what, it, when you look at all the greats, you know, they all talk about how many times they, they fail time and time and time again. Mm -hmm. Alex Famosi, I think he had like, he, he failed like seven times in a row before he actually, you know, you know, had a taste of success. You know, it was, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you hear people, so many people, you know, talk about their, you know, their failures. But the thing was, is that they, 
they took every failure and they pulled out something positive from it and it made them stronger and it made them, you know, learn. And so they took all their things that they learned and it, and the next time they tried, they got better and better and better till they succeeded. Did you feel like that was something that happened in your life? It, it was. I mean, I thought I'd gotten better and was doing great leading into 2020. And then that crashed and lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. And so, you know, you're doing everything right. And then something happens that's beyond your control. And then as soon as you thought, OK, wow, things are finally getting better. It's actually worse than was when you first started up mm -hmm. and you have to get back into it. And you have to you ask yourself, do you have that fight inside you to do it again? And luckily I did. Yeah. And I think it was my husband. I, I told my husband, I'm like, maybe I should just give up. I, I could just go get a six figure job somewhere. It's fine. I could do that. Uh, I have the qualifications. And he's like, you you haven't punched a clock in, uh, since before I've known you. <laughs> he's like, you, you've always been that independent streak. Uh, and you're never going to go back to that. And he was right. I probably won't. Doesn't mean I only work 40 hours by any means, but it's my clock that I that I keep, not somebody else's. Right. And, you know, most people that own their own businesses, they work way past 40 hours, you know, it's, oh, yeah. it's you know, because it's, it's, it's very time consuming. And when, it, when it's your business, it, it it feels different. It's, it's just different because in, and you find yourself working, you know, easily, you can get up eight in the morning and you could be working until, you know, eight, nine o'clock at night and still going and, and not stop. But, you know, I did see a lot of businesses go down during COVID and it was very sad company, large companies that I thought would be here forever were, you know, closing their, their shops and they were closing their companies down or they were cutting down on, on the amount of stores they had throughout the nation and, and small businesses, especially they were, they were closing left and right. And, you know, it was very hard, especially for small businesses to get their get people entrepreneurs back on their feet you know they they you know they because once they they're you know they, a lot of them were in the same business for years and then all yeah. of a sudden things just stopped you know their business you know their business stopped they had no choice you know and they didn't know what to do after that you know do you have any suggestions for people that come across where you know their business might fail like especially during covid like how you know do you think you know maybe from your own experience do you get back on your feet and you start do you start building the same business or now think life has changed a lot since covid do you start opening your mind to new ideas and then you know and how do you build that foundation again because you're you're kind of building from scratch, you know, and that's hard to do. It takes time to actually build that platform. Yeah, when I was rebuilding, I tried to look at it more as not rebuilding, but building something new, like right. a new endeavor. Even though it was the same endeavor, it was different. I had to do things differently. What could I do differently? Um, it's hard. Uh, you see everything you've done and, and built up and you can't imagine it any other way. The only benefit of it being knocked away is you can build it back better. Yeah. Uh, you can learn from your lessons. Uh, you have to look inside yourself. Or are you, were you happy with what you were doing? Right. What can you change to be even happier? Are you focusing on what you're good at in your business? And I talk about that in my book, you know, getting rid of the garbage that you're not good at, finding ways to pay for it because it pays for itself because you recoup your time and you focus on something you're really, really good at. And so you build your foundation like you did the first time, one brick at a time, right. one little bit at a time. But this time you're armed with a lot of knowledge of everything that you did wrong in the past. Yeah. Well, it's not an easy task, but if you look back inside yourself, you'll remember, you'll figure it out and you'll do it 10 times faster than you did the first time. Right. Uh, and you'll, you'll get there eventually, but just, uh, you always have to adapt COVID or no, you have to adapt. So should you, I tell any new business owner or any rebuilding business owner, any, any, anybody I'm consulting is, are you happy the way it's happening now? And if you're not, then you need to change what you're doing because you can't keep repeating the exact same process, expecting yeah. different results. Exactly. Um, yeah. So you, you and, and then ask for help. I did that. You know, I, uh, I'm a little bit called a little bit of a disruptor because uh, I do weird things like construction company, hiring a PR firm. <laughs> they don't usually do that. They don't usually target that. They throw a couple of Facebook ads up and that's it. I wanted to do something different in how I presented myself. And mm -hmm. so that's just kind of an example of, of go for it. Go do something different. Be, be an outsider, be a disruptor. 
I like that. I like that. They did an article on me calling me a disruptor also. And I, oh, yeah. yeah, I think that's great <laughs> because you know what? It, it shows that you're able to think out of the box, you know, and I think that's what gets people known when they're entrepreneurs. I think when you can think out of the box and do things differently and you stick out more, I think, I, I think people respect that also that you're not just following everybody else. You have your own agenda and, you know, and you're determined to follow that agenda. So I, I give you kudos because you know a lot of people don't do that they just they follow the, the the last person that succeeded and the other person follows the last person that succeeded them and you know and instead of just being their own person and doing things you know the way they think it should be done you know whether it's trending or not you know they have their own their own agenda in their mind and they've done their research and they're going to try this you know whether you know other people have tried it or not and um, so I think that's really great. You know, I feel like a lot of people need to be a disruptor. I think that's how you get noticed. It, it absolutely is. You know, um, contractors, tradespeople in general, electrician, plumbers, they're not used to networking. They don't really like it. Yeah. Um, so when I go to a networking event and I go to a lot of networking events, I've hosted a lot of networking events. When I go in, I'm usually one of the few trades individuals, unless you're going to a trade association. Well, you're not going to find your clients at your trade associations. Yeah. You're going to find your clients elsewhere. So why not go hang out where the other contractors don't hang out? It's being a little disruptive. Exactly. You know, hang out at a finance conference. How many of those are lenders that can't find contractors for their clients that they've approved? Yeah. They can't close their product until they find your services. That's pretty cool. The business means I found just by getting out there and trying something a little different, being that disruptor. So glad you kind of, you, you hone that in on that point that you got to change to adapt. Yeah. And I think that's a big problem. I think that's why people had so many problems is because they were used to doing things a certain way. And especially since COVID, things have changed rapidly. Like the way thing people do things is no longer the way people do things. You know, now it's it's like, you know, and, and there's a lot of business people out there, a lot of entrepreneurs that are still doing things the way they did it before and they're having mm -hmm. problems, you know, and what do you suggest to these people? Because a lot of times people don't realize that, you know, Hey, you got to make changes. And then sometimes they don't know where to begin, you know? Yeah. So do you have any suggestions? I do. So there's a couple things that you could do. One is if you want to do on the absolute cheapest or free, check out your local small business development center or score center. There are, they're spread out all over the country. Um, most of them are go through the SBA they're free government programs, free consulting, and you can go and talk to people. You can talk to, and these aren't just like government people, right? They're not people who are like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want their advice. No, most of these people are career professionals that have retired or decided that after running their businesses, they wanted to help others by stepping in. So these are experienced lenders, right. experienced marketing individuals, experienced accountants giving you advice. Show them everything. Don't hold back. It's kind of like your doctor. Sometimes yeah. it's uncomfortable, but you got to show, right? right? Your business is the same way. Don't walk in thinking, I'm, oh, I'm embarrassed to say that I lost money last year. Right. Don't be because they can't help you unless you show them everything. And they don't care, frankly. They're not judging you at all. All they want to do is try to help you get the best out of your business as you can. So you got to get advice. Now, if you have the ability to pay for a little bit of advice, that's even better. It's quicker. It's faster. Yeah. Where do you feel like you're failing at? Look at that. Are you not closing your sales? Talk to a sales consultant. Believe it or not, they'll pay for themselves. Yeah. Do you feel like you're not getting your social media done? Talk to a social media person. Right. Try to see some, even a consultation to get some tips or tricks. Yeah. Um, talk to specialists and things you don't specialize in and stop trying to do everything yourself with the excuse of, I can't afford. Right. Because you'd be surprised you can afford a hundred bucks a month for virtual assistance to help with a little bit of social media. Maybe it's not perfect, but it's better than what you were doing. Exactly. So focus on small incremental growth, focused on finding the knowledge that you don't have and hire people or get advice from people that are experts in their field right? so that you can start relying on all their knowledge to get your business better. It takes a massive effort from effort from all different types of professionals to make a truly successful business happen. And I think, I think everybody should have a coach, to be honest with you. I think everybody should reach out and get help in specific areas, especially, especially, you know, business owners can't do it all. And then a lot of times I find business owners, they are very creative in the area that they're focused on, but they lack business skills in certain areas, or they lack social media skills, or they lack, mm -hmm. you know, there, there are certain things because you can't do it all. You can't wear all the hats. It's Im virtually mm -hmm. impossible. So I, I think it's good to have like coaches and people helping you, you know, even even if you have to pay for it, because like you said, it will pay for itself. 
it, it will it and it does and if you i've listened to probably 25 or 30 books over the last year and it's a reoccurring message and i love it i love everybody's stories to talk about that is stop trying to do everything yourself and let tasks go yeah you know do you think the ceo of walt disney answers his own emails <laughs> well if if he can run a trillion dollar company without answering his emails uh, or having an assistant do it i think you probably could handle your company by having an assistant do that you can let things go other people have been here before you they'll be here past you it may be a bumpy road but it'll get done business will get done if you did your job as a leader instilling your values everybody's going to get the job done that you want them to get done oh 100 percent. i agree with you completely I do. And and I, I think people have to really, you know, work on change because I think a lot of people don't like change. They fear change and, and they don't, you know, they're afraid to change their business up. But in, in, in a sense, mm -hmm. it could be a really good thing, don't you think? Absolutely. A, a little change can go a long way. Uh, I mean, look at Kodak. They didn't want to change and where yeah. are they at? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So you, see other, you see countless businesses like that that refuse to adapt and then they go away or they either decrease uh and they what was once a picture we see everywhere a, a, a emblem we would see everywhere i don't even know the last time i've seen the word kodak anywhere so i know <laughs> yeah you know it's it's great that you wrote this book i like it and were there specific messages that you were trying to get across when you wrote this book because you had a lot of stories to tell but was there yeah. something that you really wanted people to understand a little bit of memoir-esque, but with lessons in each each chapter. Right. Um, what I wanted people to understand is it's okay if you don't have all the answers or you got started late or you don't have all the resources. Yeah. That's okay. There are ways in small increments to get ahead. Right. I gr grew up in a mobile home in a very rural area of Florida. Um, I went to a poor school. I was very fortunate to be able to go to a charter school when it opened that was free tuition. That's why I attribute a lot of my success to that that heavy duty education that I received early on. Yeah. Um, but that's where I started from. And here today, I sit on the board of directors of multiple organizations, including one of the most prestigious business clubs in the entire city. Right. Um, I get to interface with community leaders uh, on a frequent basis. It's pretty amazing the things I've done. And I still remember being that poor kid. So, mm -hmm. you know, one of my big focuses is affordable housing. So if we can get a good, if we can get a good night's sleep for a kid, if we can keep them healthy, they're going to be good in school. They're going to break the cycle. Right. Um, but I was that kid. So it's kind of cool to be on the other side of that now, helping other people bring themselves up and bring themselves out. And I think that's an important message too, because a lot of kids, like when I had to write a, a book for somebody about um, gang uh, gangs, they, a lot of them came from poor areas and they felt like there was no other option, you know, and they wanted to bring money in, they wanted to get money, but it's like, a, you know, the message, you know, you're trying to get across is it doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to do bad things and, and get yourself into problems that you can't get yourself out of, that there's another way, education, you know, and focus in on goals. And it seems mm -hmm. like you're a real believer in short-term and long-term goals and really focusing on education. Absolutely. And education doesn't always mean you go to the most expensive college. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't even mean you go to college. You know, there's some people that colleges they're not suited for, and that's okay. Yeah. That we right now, a plumber bills at roughly the same rate an attorney does. <laughs> yeah. 350 an hour. You're gonna get it. <laughs> yeah. So um, but a plumber, not all of them went to college. Right. And so the point being is I, I think college is very valuable. But there are also options that we need to focus on as society as saying, hey, trades and hands-on individuals are equally as valuable because yeah. it takes both. Um, an architect, a college-educated architect is nothing without the person that actually builds the building. Yes. It's, and, the, and a builder is nothing without a person that designs it. it right. we're, we're very much integrated. So um, education is is key. Uh, and I talk about that. And I also talk about uh, you know how we want to start a trade school of our own. Yeah. You know, we want to start getting people psyched up and 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 stop with the stereotypes on these things uh because you can make fun of a plumber's butt crack all you want but at 350 an hour i don't think he cares 
Oh yeah, a hundred percent. And I, you know, I think that's, that's one thing too, is like some people like they, they're, you know, they, they feel like, oh, they didn't go to college, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're not going to make much of themselves, but it's not true. You know, a lot, I know so many people that are much better with their hands that, you know, as Eva, I'll give my example. My father, you know, he came from another country. His English wasn't really good when he came here, but you give him a box, you didn't have to give him directions and he can build no. anything you wanted him to, you know, he mm -hmm. could redo anything, you know, but he did not, he, he did not read one, one pamphlet or booklet of directions his entire life. Mm -hmm. He just looked at it. And, and knew exactly what to do. And, you know, that's how some people are just very handy with their hands, you know, and, and some people mm -hmm. are just book smart. But just because you're book smart doesn't mean that you're going to go far. It's really your mentality and your goals and, and really, I think, reaching out for help, too, because I think you, people have to learn to reach out for themselves because you made a very good, you know, statement before. And, and it's so true that you can't do everything by yourself, you know. And so many people think or try to, but it, it doesn't work. Yeah. It it never does. That's you are usually your primary reason for success or failure. Yes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I think, you know, like if you had to give some really good tips for people, what would, would be some things you'd like to emphasize that, you know, for people to understand so far during our conversation? So uh, selfishly read my book. Building success at toolbox coming out on top, <laughs> but and no, you, really. Oh, you, go ahead. I was going to say you have a special <laughs> right now because it's on pre-launch and it's only it is, yes, right it's now. on pre-order right now. It's only ninety-nine cents for your Amazon Kindle. Um, it's so it's easy to find on Amazon. You can go to tommywhitehead.com to find it. Um, uh, but while you're there, while you're buying my book, hopefully buy some other books too. Um, so one of my big tips is reading. It, it seems like you never have time. I do almost everything through audiobook now because I'm in the yeah. car so often. Right. And you just get to absorb something different and somebody else's perspective. And every once in a while, you'll back up and you'll replay a passage because it'll be like, whoa, did they say that? Yeah. Um, ask for help around you. Recognize your failures. So recognize what you hate doing. What you can't stand doing. Can you not stand your bookkeeping? Can you not stand your social media? Can you not stand uh, talking to a client? What, what is it that you cannot stand doing? Find somebody else to do that because if you're not torturing yourself that, you'll be more productive doing something you like to do. Right. Um, and the third thing I would say is know the power of your network. Mm -hmm. um, you would be surprised how many people you know around you that could help you. And everybody gets so one-sided. They can't help me. Have you tried helping them first? Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe your friend knows seven people around you, a hundred people around you. If they're your friend and they know what you need and you're helping them they're going to try to help you and they're going to use their network to do that too so now the power of your network it's it's powerful yeah and i think people don't realize that there's so many there's so many leads and there's so many people around you that could help you and even like if you go on linkedin there are so many contacts and so many people that you could make acquaintances with that will actually want to help you or you could you know yeah. You can work together, you know, in specific things, you know, people, people forget that there are so many people around them that could actually help them. And that if you interact and make connections, you could really go far. Absolutely. Put a post on LinkedIn. You'd be surprised how many responses you get or the well thought out. Post it in the form of a question or a statement. I'm doing this and I'm not seeing where I could do better. Can somebody assist or give me some thoughts? You'd be shocked how many people will jump in to give advice um take it out with a grain of salt analyze everything and choose what you need to act on but you can come up with some really cool things by interacting with other professionals oh 100 percent. that's a very good point and people like to help people you know people don't realize it they think you know because i think the news is filled with negative media you know but there are a lot of great people out there that really want to see other people succeed you know I, i've met so many people in my life that people have that have built really successful businesses and they want to give back and there's so many people out there like that it's just reaching out and and just asking i think uh, yeah, that's that's what it is. Be humble. It's okay. Uh, it, it takes assistance to get to where you want to be. You can't do it by yourself. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And, you know, I mean, what are other some, some other things that you'd like to emphasize that you could think of that really would help people grow their business and be successful? Well, I talk a lot about disruption in my book. And so can I share kind of a, a, a story from a chapter yeah, there? Definitely. Okay. All right. So it's about uh, making bathtub lemonade. 
<laughs> and, and it's a lot different than the South. So you got to hear me out. All right. All right. So, so I realized I was an entrepreneur at a young age. Mm -hmm. um, so at about six or seven, I had seen, I, I grew up, you know, poor in the country. I said that before we were kind of out nowhere uh, yeah. in out of nowhere and with a super long driveway. So <laughs> I'd see all these kids on these commercials and these shows and they're always the Southern California um, uh, suburb kind of kids with their lemonade stands outside. So I thought I could do a lemonade stand and I could make so much money on lemonade that I can, I, I could definitely get my family to Disney world. Cause we really wanted to go and I'd never been. And so I really wanted to go like, we could do this. We can go to Disney and I'm going to be super successful, but wait, I, I don't have any water at the end of my road. So it's going to take forever to make lemonade. So I need to make a patch of lemonade up here and take it down. But then I thought, no, I need to make a lot of lemonade, a huge amount of lemonade because people are going to be so thirsty because this lemonade is going to be so good that I'm going to be so busy. Again, country road, not many people go by, but in my entrepreneurial six-year-old mind, this is going to work. So I look for a bigger container instead of just one pitcher to make the lemonade. I like I make more so that I have this in, in reserve. And I look, what's the biggest container I can find? My bathtub. <laughs> so six-year-old Tommy goes into the bathroom and clogs the tub with the, with the spout and starts turning on and it starts turning the water on and then I start scooping lemonade into the bathtub to make the, the, the dry powder to make to make a batch of lemonade oh, in so comes funny. my mother a few scoops in yelling at me what are you doing and she pulls the plug and just like that my lemonade empire went down the drain <laughs> I was devastated and I survived. But the idea was, even then I was thinking, focus on bigger instead of smaller. Right. If you could handle, if you can handle the small stuff, you probably can handle thinking bigger. It's just by realms and quantities. Yeah. So I was thinking, okay, I need a hundred gallons of lemonade, not just one gallon of lemonade because it's more efficient making it that way. I could sell it faster. It makes everything easier. Yeah. Now, of course I was lacking my clientele and health code at the time behind me, but, uh, <laughs> but, the, but the idea is kind of the same and it's, and it's writing this book, that story came to surface. Like we were talking about something and, and uh, I start to write that part of the story and I'm like, wow, I can't believe that I had these little traits of entrepreneurialism, even as, a, even as a kid, but yeah. the moral of the story is think bigger, yeah. uh, think Think outside your box. Try to do something a little different. Um, be a little disruptive. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people think about multi-businesses too. Like, how do you feel? Like, I, I hear a lot of people say, stick to one thing and focus on one thing. And then you see people mm -hmm. that say, oh, you know, you should really like, you know, put your put a little bit here and do a little bit of this and, and see what works best for you. Like, you know, what do you think, you know, from your own experience in life, like works really well? Should you focus on one specific area, one specific business, or is it good to dabble in little things here and there and really see where your strengths lie? So I would say uh, if you put time into multiple businesses, you are splitting some of your devoted time. So start with what you know and stay in your core competencies. So yeah. I'm a construction firm, but I don't build skyscrapers. So if somebody comes in and says, hey, we need, we need 20 stories, we need 30 stories, we need 100 stories built. That's not my forte. It's not my experience. Getting too far outside of my box yeah. can be detrimental to my company. Yeah. In the same token... I've launched a capital company mm -hmm. because I wanted to fund construction projects I was working on. So yes, I'll be working in the capital markets, um, uh, getting uh, donation or not donations, getting investments yeah. to go out and build real estate projects, but it's still within my realm of development and construction. Yeah. I'm a co-founder of an AI firm. Never thought that would be the case. And mm -hmm. I don't want to run or be in a tech company necessarily. However, uh, somebody approached me. We started working on a project together and we're developing tools and technology for takeoffs and AI and construction. So, uh, you know, we're going to lose about 40% of our workforce in the next five years due to retirement. We don't have yeah. enough people to replace them. So finding ways to integrate AI into the mundane parts of construction, the planning, the prep, and some of those other things uh, is paramount to help uh, alleviating that staffing shortage. So yeah. while yes, it's tech, it's still construction. So right. I'm still staying in my envelope. I'm not in a biomedical tech firm. Yeah. Um, I'm not in a um, animal firm. I'm not in an oil industry. I'm staying still inside my core competencies because yeah. I could figure something out, but I'd be operating on a, on a huge curve to try to figure out um, if I want to build a theme park. You know, right. I, that's that's past my expertise. So, yes, you can dabble in a few things. But when you're presenting yourself, don't say, you know, and I uh, 
do this and I do this and I do this. It needs to have a cohesive flow. Yeah. So if health insurance and cosmetics don't go hand in hand, you need to determine who your crowd is in front of you that day and yeah. be in the lane that you want to be. If it's presenting uh, at a beauty uh, at, a, at a wedding fest fair, uh, then you want to be in the cosmetics lane. You exactly. know, if it's in a financial planning seminar, you want to be in the life insurance lane, whatever that may be, find, make sure you're advertising and your clients know who you are and what you represent before you step too far into the anti does this anti does this, because mm -hmm. then you're not an expert on anything. Right. I think that's great advice because I see a lot of people do that too. You know, they, they talk, you know, one person will mention one topic, you know, oh, oh, I do that. I I would, you know, I do that. Da, 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 da. And then someone else is talking about something else. And all of a sudden they look at that person and they're like, oh yeah, yeah. I, you know, I did that for like so many years and I'm doing this and this and this mm -hmm. and this, you know, but I think then it, 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 it pulls your credibility down, you know, and I think you really, that's really good advice. Look at who your audience is. Cause I think that's one of the biggest problems in business when people are not doing well why am I not getting the response? Why am I not getting the sales? You know, why am I, people aren't really taking interest because I think sometimes people, they look at what they like and they're not really focusing on who their real audience is. And I think that's a really plays a big factor is figuring out who do your, your audience is. And, and, you know, maybe you can tell me if you agree or not, and maybe you have some suggestions for people to help them figure out who their audience is. Cause there's so many people that I've, I've dealt with, you know, have, have struggled figuring out who their audience is. Yeah. So figure out what you're trying to accomplish. And a lot of people don't do that before they figure out what their audience is. Yeah. Am I trying to sell a kitchen? Mm -hmm. So if I'm trying to sell a kitchen, my audience changes. Yes. From if I am trying to get somebody to invest capital. Right. Now, could some of those people overlap? Yes, but barely. So, mm -hmm. I'm going to go to an investor conference or host a networking event uh, to get investors to come in. That's how I'm going to connect to my investor base. But the individuals wanting kitchens, I need to be in local community fairs. Yes. I need to be in local building shops. I need to have a showroom. That's how I get my individuals. I might need to be featured on TV, um, something like that. Right. Uh, so you got to back up before you're identifying your audience and identifying what do you do? And it goes back to like the, that example I said, and I do, and I do, and I do. That's okay. Yeah. But don't try to sell cosmetics to your financial investors or advisors right. because that's not your market that you're looking for. Exactly. That's very yeah. good advice because that was like one of the biggest things that so many people, they did not know who their audience was. And then they're approaching, mm -hmm. you know, the, the wrong type of content and the wrong type of selling to this audience and then they weren't getting responses and they couldn't understand why they weren't getting responses mm -hmm. is there is there some any tools that that you have used in the past while you were growing your business to figure out who your real true audience was well that, i'm glad you asked that so it goes back to what i said before i found people to help me mm -hmm. i found a pr agency i found a marketing agency i found a podcast production company yeah. all of these individuals listen to me, analyze my sound bites, have a conversation with me. They help me curate my target audience because right. while anybody that wants construction is an audience, it's yeah. not a tailored audience. It is way too broad yeah. of, of an audience. So they help me refine and go back to know that, okay, that we're talking about ADUs a lot here in Tampa right now. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody is curious about those. Maybe that's the space I need to be in. Yeah. And so we start pivoting to that space. And then every, every bit of messaging starts to go towards that space. Right. But that took a series of consultants and those consultants can pay for themselves, even if they start to get expensive. And as you go on, if you're being successful, those costs go up, but you're talking about a few thousand dollars and they bring in a million dollars. It's all yeah. of a sudden the return on investment is insane, but that's by getting advice early on from those professionals in their field. I'm not an SEO expert myself. I can't mm -hmm. tell you who's searching what, but if my SEO tells me that kitchens are the number one search thing and no, not getting returns, that's a space I want to be in because it's right. low hanging fruit. Exactly. That's very Ask good. Ask your advice. consultants. Yep. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. You know, I, I think it's really important that people like, you know, your, your main, your, your emphasis today was you know, really reaching out and asking for help. And I think, you know, when it comes to building a business and building a successful business, I think patience also have, takes a toll. And I, I think a lot of people get impatient. I've seen a lot of people that have had businesses and especially when they failed and they started up again and they had to rebuild their businesses, they wanted results right away. 
and you know it takes time like what do you say to those people who are starting to get frustrated and maybe they want to jump out of the business but the business they're in could have potential but they're just very impatient so what do you say to those type of people analyze what you're being uh, what you're frustrated with or what you think you're not hitting on and either trying to find a consultant or a partner mm -hmm. maybe it's time that you don't want to be a solo entrepreneur yeah. And anytime you partner with somebody, you know, go through a proper background, not just your buddy. Make sure you lie uh, financially. Make sure uh, your backgrounds work. Make sure the education complements each other. Um, make sure you know who you're getting into business with. But maybe partnering with somebody that takes over those things that you can't stand will give you the freedom to do what you really want to do. Right. And make your business more successful. So really, if you're failing in your business, it's not that you're failing on every single aspect. There's a few people that get out of business and just suck at everything from their product all the way to delivery, to sales, to accounting, everything. There's a few people that suck at everything. But there are certain things that you really aren't going to like. Figure out what you're failing in and see if you can get that off your plate. I think that's that helped me a lot. Yeah. Getting things like scheduling stuff on my calendar off my plate. Drywall orders, material orders are off my plate now. It was taking so much of my time. It's not that I can't do it. It's just somebody else does it faster and better. And then it lets me focus on things like writing a book, right. things like volunteering at our local aquarium, things like um, sitting on boards, having interviews like this. Yeah. Uh, so I had to step back myself and think when I wanted, did I want to be in this? What do I really like about it? Let yeah. me stay and live in that space. And right. then everything else will get assigned to somebody else. I think that's great advice because I, I think, you know, it, it, when you, you know, you start to, you're starting to build success when you could work less and, and still continue to make more, you know, right. and the more you could delegate your responsibilities to other individuals who are responsible enough to take those on. You also have people that have different talents and see things differently and just mm -hmm. co collaborating all those different ideas, I think too, can make a huge difference in building success as well. What do you think? Uh, yes, collaboration is the key to expansion. Uh, it's it's very good. It doesn't always have to mean a joint partnership. Right. Sometimes it's just establishing good networking relationships. You know, I just had a young guy detail my car last night. I met him at a networking event and he's done it many times and he does a great job. And he's probably very early 20s. And he, inv he got into a networking group and it's always, already 30 times his investment in his first year. And I thought that was pretty cool. But yeah. he'll always pick my brain for business advice. And we were talking. Um, I met my cleaner through the same group, my house cleaner. Yeah. And he says, yeah, I know her. We partner up. Whenever I do RVs on the outside, I hire her to clean the inside. <laughs> I like that. So I said, that's pretty cool that you're yeah. capitalizing on something you're not good at. And you could do everything in one package for a client. Yeah. I said, have you thought about making a little postcard for her and you that has both your cleaning businesses on it to say, hey, you cleaned your inside. Do you want the car cleaned or you clean the car? Do you want your house this clean? Yeah. Call back and forth. And that's an excellent partnership without being a partnership. Oh, 100%. so yeah. so it's just a cool way of stretching your stretching your marketing out a little bit, doing something a little disruptive, a little different. But it's taking a different approach to something, getting help from somebody, but did not cost that person a thing. Yeah. They, the help is exchange referrals back and forth, creating a great partnership. And a lot of times, if you want to try to impress somebody, if you get them a referral, they're going to be your friends and they're going to try to help you with referrals. Right. So find find that stuff that you don't like and try to have somebody help you with it. I like that a lot. Now you have different things on your website that you offer. And can you tell us a little about all the different services that you do and you provide sure. for others? Absolutely. So Tomco Solutions, my core construction company, uh, is uh, primarily residential construction. We do a tad bit of little commercial stuff, but it's primarily residential construction. And that is anything from your kitchen and bathroom remodels uh, mm -hmm. to full guts, um, brand new builds. Uh, we'll do custom homes, insurance disasters claims. We've had several floods. We've had two rebuilds, having to knock houses down and build them over again. Yeah. Um, we do multifamily, and we were recently awarded a lot with the city of Tampa to, to develop a, a small affordable housing complex as well. So that's that's Tomco Solutions. It's, it's construction projects in the state of Florida. Um, 
Tomco Capital Partners is my capital company. We're just forming right now. We don't even have any deals to advertise right now, but mm -hmm. Tomco Capital Partners is a great place to drop your information in case that's an industry or you're interested in uh, various um, investment opportunities in the state of Florida at some point uh, coming up in the near future. And then I am co-founder of uh, clearset.ai, which is an AI company that specializes in data scrubbing and cleaning. And they are um, also heavily involved in my construction takeoff tool to actually replace some of the manual labor of doing count uh, takeoffs in the construction industry off of plans and having AI do the menial part of it. Um, so sit on, um, the, and that's what I do professionally with my companies. Um, I'm also very proud to say that I'm the president and founder of the Pride Construction Coalition to help um, feature more LGBT construction companies. There's only two such organizations in the country. And oh, mine wow. is one of those. And yeah. so we're very happy to provide a space where LGBT individuals can just network, connect, yeah. um, pass leads and projects off to each other yeah. um, because we kind of get ostracized in our industry a little bit. There's a lot of stereotypes. It's yeah. getting better. Um, it most people are very, very good people, even in the construction industry, but we got a little, a little work to do still. And this kind of helps us slowly start to peel back and show that we're just professionals here to get our jobs done. Exactly. I like that. Now, what's the website that they should go to when they want to find out all about these services? So the best place to find me is TommyWhitehead.com. You can find my uh, all my social links there. You can find links to my uh, websites and my other ventures, a little bit more information about me, a couple pictures of my family, some podcast interviews where I've been featured. You can pre-order my book, Building Success, The Toolbox Coming Out on Top. And we're not just doing a book launch. You know, we're not just going to sit in a Barnes and Noble and sign a couple books. We are doing a three day networking summit in Tampa I from May it. 31st to June 2nd. I'm telling you, you want to say you love it. My sponsors are getting a hand tour or a personal tour of Tampa. I'm taking them behind the scenes of the aquarium and we're going to dive in the tank with the animals. We oh, are wow. going to have a gourmet chocolate tasting and champagne tasting with Florida homegrown chocolates and champagnes, or excuse me, uh, sparkling wines. I don't want to get in trouble with the French. Um, <laughs> we're doing private dining experiences in 100-year-old restaurants. Uh, we're doing private yacht tours, uh, wow. sunset sail. That's just for my sponsors. Now, the main event for everybody, it's, it's going to be really cool. It is going to be, uh, we're going to have some speakers there. We're going to have auctions, vendor fairs, pitch sessions, uh, open bar, uh, live Rocky Horror Picture Show. Picture show. Yeah. It's going to be a massive entertaining networking type event so that we can create a bond and experience. Uh, so yeah, you can find out about all of those things, my companies, my book, my uh, event, the Building Success Summit, all at TommyWhitehead.com. I love it. I love it. Wow. That's so exciting. I love it. I love it. And so they can find out about the summit and everything on your, on your website. Everything. I just wanted to make it one click for them. All right. I love it. That's great. Oh my God, Tommy, this has been wonderful. I am so glad you came on the show today. Before we go, is there anything else, any last words or any tips before we leave that you'd like to leave the listeners with? Sure. Keep believing in yourself. It's okay to fail. It's not okay to sit there on the ground. You got to get yourself up and get yourself moving again and say, I failed. I'm not going to do that again and keep moving. And like I said, read my book, Building Success. I'd love to share your story with, or share my story with you. Oh, I love it. I love it. Tommy, thank you so much for coming on the show. You've been amazing and you've given us a whirlwind of information, you know, that is, is very valuable. So thank you so much and congratulations to your successes. I really admire you and everything you've done. Thank you so much, Stacey. This has been a lot of fun. I really appreciate your time today. Oh, thank you. You have a great day. You too.